but over time it was four years I was doing this, so it added up. I wasn't dealing as many as fast as Sammy the Bull, but like the 10 people he said over time, it was more than he dealt. You ran for four years. I think he ran for a year and a half. Yes. So you, so you sold more than Sammy the Bull, and at the time he was also in Arizona. Yes. Did you guys ever face off? Did you ever have a sit down? Was there any meeting like the heat scene in the movie where Pacino and De Niro were sitting and talking? <laughs> I locked down the Arizona rave scene because I was an early entrant and it was a lot of competing little clicks. Those little clicks would come to me as the Bank of England to lend money for the parties and the drug deals, whatever. Now, some of those little clicks had disputes. So me and Wildman would mediate those disputes and, you know, in the end, we incorporated all these different little clicks into my organization. So I had the local people locked down. All of a sudden, these new kind of ecstasy dealer started showing up in the club scene and at the raves, like steroid head jocks. He had the devil's dogs, these white supremacists. Out of, I think they were out of Mesa or Chandler. These, these big dudes, and I'm like, you know, who are these guys stepping on my toes? So we're all getting really curious because we had no idea where they were coming from. Now, I was married to a woman, she'd done a university degree, but she was also doing lesbian internet porn. She had a bisexual lover, a female, and she said, look... That you knew of? Yeah, 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 that, that, that I encouraged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she said, look, her girlfriend's boyfriend is one of these new dudes, and he wants to meet you and discuss business opportunities. So I still don't know who they work for. So I take one of my bouncers with me, Rosetti. He's packing a gun to this nightclub. And my wife and we go there and Rosetti hangs back with the gun. They don't know he's with me. This the guy, the Spaniard comes out and he goes, you know, come into the, you know, the VIP room. I want you to meet my business partner. I go back there on my own. Rosetti slipped back as well, he's watching me. And then this massive, you know, six foot, six and a half foot plus guy comes out. I'm sat down on a sofa between these two guys. You're sitting in between these yeah, two well, guys. Yeah, well, the, the, the big guy told everyone to sofa to get the out of the, 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 the yeah. area, really, and leave the room. And we sit down on this sofa. And like I said early on, you know, I'm taking drugs because it makes me wild. But inside, I'm this shy, anxious person. Mm -hmm. person. But I took GHB going in, and the GHB is hitting me. When we're, on, when we're sitting down on the sofa. And I, I, he introduced me, this the Spaniard and the, and the other guy, Mark, I think the other guy's name was. So I just playfully grab both, grab both of them, grab both of them, he's right, like right Big here. guy sitting yeah, next as, to you. As we're sitting down, I grab both of them, the knees. I'm thinking, you know, I'm English, Sean. <laughs> I've got a reputation to uphold with these guys. I've got to show them I'm a bit of a crazy mofo. So I, I grab their knees. And, um, you know, they were looking like I was a bit crazy. Um, they were like, look, Sean, we're moving a lot of pills, and we know you are, and we know you're locked down with the local people. You've got a good relationship with them. How would you feel about moving pills? Our pills? We'll give you a good price. And I said, look, I'm aware of you guys' pills. They're those coloured pills. I'm getting pills from Holland. I've got a reputation to uphold. I'm not going to mess around with these coloured pills. A lot of them counterfeits made in America. So the Spaniard, he was, he was okay with, with it. He was calm, but the other guy, he was like, how, you know, how the, who the f do you think you are disrespecting our pills? One call to Sammy the Bull and we can have you taken out to the desert. Now I was aware of John Gotti and all that making you know, news and I'm thinking, are these guys just, just talking shit, what? At this point, have you heard of the name Sammy the Bull yet? Like, From the John that... Gotti new, on, on the news. But uh, no, I'm talking local <laughs> Arizona that he's going up against no. you. So you haven't heard Sammy the I Bull? I think that maybe these guys are plastic gangsters throwing this name out, trying got to scare it. me. Got it. But when I got out and told my bouncer, he's like, that, you know, hey, you know, this is, this is serious now if, if it is the Bull because um, He's murdered up to two dozen people. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm high on, on GHB and this is starting to sink in a bit as we're going out of there. So how did that end? How did that end with them? All right, so it didn't end well because I told him, look, I'm staying with my people and doing my own product. There's, a, there's enough room for us to coexist, but I will give you guys a heads up. Since you guys have been running around in the clubs and the raves saying you're the biggest drug kingpins since you know, whatever. A lot of heat has started to come to the scene. Me and my security people are noticing undercover cars with cameras, taking pictures, police 
coming in, pretending to be from out of town, trying to set up ecstasy deals. Nothing like this was going on before you guys came into town. So they were like, all right, well, Spaniard was like, okay, well, thanks for the heads up. And I said, look, it's not each other we've got to worry about, it's the cops. Eventually that, that proved accurate. So let me ask you, at this point, you, you said you, you went four years, he went a year and a half. Yeah. At what part of your four was it that he got in? 98, 99, around then, that those guys started popping up into the scene. 99 is when they started popping up in the scene. I'm guessing. Okay, I'm guessing. Got yeah, it. So yeah. you're, you, you've you been going for a year, year and a half mm -hmm. while they pop up in the scene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you never had a face off directly with Sammy. There was no... What happened was, well, I was getting protected by the New Mexican Mafia, so I felt a fair degree of safety because even with those guys coming into town, the New Mexican Mafia were formidable. I mean, these guys have got a lot of heavy duty stuff locked down. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking these guys have got my back. They're more powerful than these guys. The drugs is telling me, you know, you, you, you're comparatively safe. But what happened was, my bouncer, when we left that meet, said, how long will the piece last if this is re for real? They lured my top sales guy, Skinner, who was moving a lot of product for me, to a nightclub in Scottsdale under the pretenses of buying pills from him, took him into the men's room, knocked his teeth out, knocked, took tens of thousands of dollars off him. That was the heads up that things were getting heavy. Yeah, I, I moved to Tucson after that. How strong are you at this point? Meaning, how deep are you at this point? Not, not deep of movers, deep of strength, power, street cred, yeah. you know, enough gangs on your side yeah. or the, the right muscle on your side that people don't want to cross you. My philosophy always was, if this goes to the violence or murder level, it's a whole new ball game. The police are going to look at us differently and then we're going to get sent down for a lot of time. Yeah, I've got the New Mexican Mafia behind me, but utilizing that is going to cause me even bigger problems in the long run. Just the fact that they're behind me and people know is got enough it. of a deterrent to give me that street cred yeah. and keep the debts getting paid. So I moved over 100, about 100 miles or so away to Tucson in a million dollar house on a mountain in a gated guarded community, Sin Vacas, where you couldn't even get into that neighborhood without going through a guard who had to call the house. Bill Banana was up there and further along the mountain range was um, Paul McCartney. Very familiar with that area. In, yeah. In Tama, oh, Tucson. beautiful, yeah. most beautiful place I've ever lived in my life. That's where people in Tucson want to live. That's where the yeah. people of Tucson, it's like a dream. I would go to the mailbox and there would be deer around the mailbox. The lightning would bounce down the mountain off yeah. the house. And when there was a, the rain, a waterfall would, would form at the side of the house and a little stream. Oh, it was, it was amazing. So at this point, uh, what, what do you, you're by yourself. No one's around. Your wife's not around. Your muscle's not around. Your friends are not around. The party scene's not around. Your wife's girlfriend's not around. No one's around. You're by yourself. What are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself, Sean, you're in too deep. You got to figure out a way to get out. Or are you saying, let's double down. Let's go to another state. What are you thinking? 